Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in Lent. It's good to see all of you here in the sanctuary, and a special welcome to those joining us online or watching this as a recorded service. A special welcome to guests and visitors who are with us this morning. Please check your cell phones and make sure that they are silenced for worship today. I want to thank you for your generous donations of candy for the Easter egg hunt. We had a great team yesterday of 10 young people and three adults who helped stuff the eggs and host the hunt. And we had a great number of children from the community come, a lot of new faces, um, some people that have been worshiping with us online uh, brought grandchildren. So it was really a blessing to offer that to the community. So thank you so much for your generous support. You probably noticed the painting work in our building, and we apologize for that paint smell, but the brightening of our hallways is, is steadily growing down the hall. So we hope to wrap that up soon, and we appreciate your patience with that. Today, between services, we have our coffee fellowship, so please stay for refreshments and to visit with one another. We also have our adult Bible study, and Pastor Eric is continuing to look at what happens on Holy Week between Palm Sunday and Monday Thursday. And for our online worshipers, if you'd like to attend via Zoom, the link for that went out um, on Saturday morning's Constant Contact, and we hope that you'll join that Zoom gathering shortly before 9.45. Our observance of Lent continues on Wednesday night. This Wednesday at 7 o'clock is our final evening prayer service for this season that is at 7, and we hope that you will come for a time of prayer, Bible reading, and reflection together. You'll notice on the back cover of the bulletin that the Easter flower form is there, or you can give gifts to the pastor's discretionary fund on Easter Sunday. For our online worshipers, there's a downloadable bulletin available on our website at rlcmilford.com connect or on Facebook, and you'll find all of our announcements and that Easter flower form there as well. I hope that everyone will download our daily devotions to use during the week. They are available at rlcmilford.com connect. And on the table in the narthex, you'll find those devotions printed if you'd like to take a copy. There's also um, the new booklet that covers the next three months of devotions. That's available as well. Thank you for your generous financial support of Reformation's ministry. Your giving enables us to share the grace of Jesus with more and more people. If you are joining us online, I encourage you to go to rlcmilford.com give, where you can make a offering there, and we have our plate in the narthex as well. There are even more announcements in the bulletin this morning, including the women's group that's meeting this week, and you can learn more about the Easter Basket Project. Um, Sherry, could you raise your hand? Sherry Titherington is coordinating that for the Christian Service Committee, and that's already gotten started in the narthex, so thank you for getting that going this morning. With that, I invite you to stand for confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the God who rescues us from sin and death, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But the Lord is a God of great mercy, who calls us to walk in ways of repentance. Let us confess our sins to him, so that we may be cleansed from all unrighteousness and grow in the power of grace. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name, now and forever. Amen. God gave his Son, Jesus Christ, to die and rise again for the salvation of the world. In his love there is full redemption and peace. And so, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank and praise you for your extravagant love for all people. As we near the end of our Lenten journey and draw ever closer to the cross of Christ, strengthen our trust in you. Help us to follow Jesus and bear witness to his grace. May the love you pour into our hearts overflow into our world through our words and deeds. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do you remember the former things or consider the things of old? I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. 
More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered all of these things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the past two years, a life lesson I have learned as a result of the pandemic is something I call use the good stuff. Here's an example. You recall how the pandemic started during Lent. Since we were at home most of the time, I began to notice things around our house that I hadn't paid attention to in years. I discovered objects I had set aside long ago because they were too good for everyday use. One item I noticed was a set of beautiful candles that were shaped like eggs made with gorgeous colors. I'd been saving them for Easter for 20 years. With things feeling bleak in the early days of the pandemic, I thought, this is the year we are going to use these unique and cheerful candles. So on Easter, we lit them, we enjoyed them, and the festive decorations finally served their purpose. From the moment I lit those candles, I've applied this principle of use the good stuff in other areas too. The wooden cutting board we received as a wedding present that was too nice to put food on or mark up with a knife, now I use it almost daily to cook. Do you have anything like this? Maybe it's an item of clothing that you don't want to fade or get dirty, so you never wear it. It just hangs in your closet. You might have gardening tools, fishing poles, or shop equipment that you don't want to wear out. You don't want the blade to get dull. You don't want to damage it, so those things sit and gather dust in your garage or shed. If you have a creative hobby like drawing, painting, or sewing, you might be afraid to use that good art paper or the expensive paint or the fabric you bought at that special store. Even though I started applying this motto two years ago, I'm still working on getting myself to use the good stuff. It takes time to overcome the mindset that I should hold on to things that are beautiful or expensive, precious or rare. It takes practice to use the good stuff. 
This life lesson makes me appreciate even more what Mary is doing in our gospel reading today. She's using the good stuff. Mary's actions are over the top. In fact, in the eyes of at least one observer, she's acting reckless and ridiculous. She's doing something that does not compute. Here's the setting. Mary and her sister Martha and their brother Lazarus were hosting a dinner for Jesus. It occurred between two significant events in Jesus' life. Just before this gathering, he raised his good friend Lazarus from the dead. He had been in the tomb for four days when Jesus arrived. After weeping for his friend, Jesus prayed to God, and then he called Lazarus by name and ordered him to come out of the grave. He did. Lazarus was alive. His family members unwound the cloth wrappings he wore in death, and he left the grave behind. Thanks to Jesus' power, Lazarus returned to his home, to his family, and to life itself. Well, in today's gospel reading, that memory of death lingered in the air as Jesus went to Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' home for dinner, six days before Passover. Jesus was on the brink of the most significant event of his life, entering Jerusalem, and being condemned to death on the cross. With his friends returned from the grave still fresh in their minds, Mary prepared Jesus for his death that was yet to come. While Martha worked on the meal, Mary took a jar filled with expensive perfume. It was worth one year's wages. If Mary had been saving it for something special, that thought was long gone. With Jesus in her home, the day had come, and Mary decided to use the good stuff. She fell down before him, poured the fragrant perfume over his feet, and wiped his feet with her hair. Now imagine how surprised Martha, Lazarus, and Jesus' disciples would have been by Mary doing this. The value of the perfume was enough for anyone to be shocked at her extravagant gesture. And there's something deeper going on here, too. Anointing someone usually meant pouring oil on their head, not their feet. Putting ointment on someone's feet was what you would do when you buried them. What's more, women's hair was usually braided or kept pinned to their heads, not loose in a way that you could use it to wash someone's feet. Letting your hair down was something women would do when they were distraught and grieving. While the others might have been wondering what in the world Mary was doing, Judas objected. He disagreed with Mary's signs of love and devotion toward Jesus. He argued about her using up the perfume instead of selling it for the disciples' treasury. Jesus explained why she was using the good stuff when he said, Leave her alone. She bought it so she might keep it for the day of my burial. Well, let me ask you, how would you respond if you were a guest at that dinner? watching Mary pour out the ointment on Jesus' feet and smelling the aroma of the perfume. I wonder if we would calculate the cost of the perfume, like Judas, or would we be wishing we'd brought a precious gift to pour out on Jesus, like Mary did? Would we sense that Jesus' burial was actually coming very quickly? Or would we cling to the triumph of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and deny that Jesus himself would have to die. It's hard to know what we would do if we had been guests at that dinner. But it's certain that Mary was holding nothing back as she poured out her love and devotion for Jesus. She trusted in him and the path he was on, even though it would cost him his life. Mary's reckless act of using up all the perfume and wiping Jesus' feet with her hair was her way of saying, I love you. It was her way of saying goodbye. Well, today marks the final Sunday in Lent, and we are moving quickly toward the end of Jesus' life. Soon, Palm Sunday and Holy Week will be upon us, and we'll remember again how Jesus gave himself up for us and for our salvation. How has your Lent been going this year? Whether you've had a fruitful season of self-reflection or you've been frustrated by, by distractions, it's never too late to express your devotion to Jesus. 
You don't have to have a jar of expensive perfume. All you need is to give Jesus the love of your heart. St. Therese of Les a, a French Catholic nun, described the attitude we can carry through the end of Lent when she wrote, when one loves, one does not calculate. You and I live in a world that calculates constantly and worries about not having enough. But when we love Jesus, we can have a new mindset. When we pour out our love for our Savior, when we give him the good stuff of our hearts, our capacity to love increases all the more. The way you share your love for Jesus might not look like Mary's way, and that's okay. You might express your devotion by praying quietly, or singing a hymn, or talking with Jesus while you walk in nature, or reading a Bible passage with renewed faith. Whatever you do, I hope it helps you discover that Jesus' love shown to you on the cross was the most extravagant love of all. Because he loves you, he took on your sin, suffered and died for you and for the sake of the whole world. And then God raised him up to new life. Thanks to Jesus, you are free from the power of sin and death. You are free to use all the good stuff God has given you to bless and serve others. We don't hear how the evening at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' house ended. But we can imagine that everyone who left that night took some of the aroma of the perfume with them. It lingered on their clothes and in their hair. The fragrance reminded them of the outpouring of love they had witnessed. By hearing the story together, we've all been guests at this dinner. And you will carry the fragrance of Mary's perfume into the world as you leave this place or as your time of online worship comes to an end. How will you use the time that's left in Lent to express your devotion and love for the Lord? However you choose to do that, I encourage you to use the good stuff from your mind and soul. Use it all. Offer yourself freely to the Lord. Spend the next several days giving Jesus your extravagant, over-the-top, reckless, does-not-compute kind of love. Don't hold any of it back. Love Jesus in a way that prepares him for his burial, because he is about to die on the cross and then rise again to new life for you. Amen. Please stand.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our needs and the needs of all the world before the Lord, whose mercy endures forever. Heavenly Father, thank you for guiding us through this season of Lent. Show us how to freely express our devotion to our Savior and Lord as he prepares to die on the cross for our sake. Open our hearts to receive his outpouring of love and grace for us and for the world. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord Jesus, help us to trust in you with our whole hearts and to build our lives on the promise of your resurrection to eternal life. Take away our fear of scarcity. Make us bold to live generously and to give away the gifts you have first given us, especially the gift of your love. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. O Holy Spirit, guide Reformation Lutheran Church to be a blessing to our neighbors and our whole community. Thank you for the children and youth of our congregation and the ways they share their gifts in humble service. Nurture the bonds between the generations here at Reformation so we may learn from each other and grow in faith together. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of all, we pray for the people of Ukraine. Give them safety and let them know your presence and your power. Bring an end to war and suffering in Ukraine. Stir up in the people of Russia a desire for peace. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Heavenly Father, we pray for the poor and the hungry. Work through your people to provide for those who lack shelter and food and to support those who face hardship or injustice. Protect those suffering from persecution in China. Comfort and heal those who are experiencing mental health struggles and those who are ill with COVID-19. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Almighty God, we lift before you all those who are sick, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Renata McKenzie, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Linda Kakamis, Barbara Seth, David, Keith Wilson, Todd French, Don Hanna, Kathy Hubbard, Carol Powell, Donna Abel, Greg Waddington, Katie De Silva, Irene Ward, Corey Subjinski, Helene Reed, Kevin Boots, Pete Murphy, Johnny Lynn Jones, Patty Dolliber, Dickie Cooper, Diana Smith, Lisa Kakamis, Mary, C Mary Kay Connessy, the Conway family, Walter Donovan, Shirley Gerhold, Crystal Lines. And those whom we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Merciful God, hear our cry when we call to you. Cast out the fear of sin and death so that we, along with all of creation, may praise you with open and trusting hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, O Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. If you're watching on the live stream or the recorded service and there are others with you, take a moment now and greet them with a sign of God's peace. And for those who are here in the sanctuary, you can greet members of your household with peace. We do ask you to stay in your pews, but then you can turn and wave just to greet the, your fellow members with God's peace today.
want to take a moment and greet those who are worshiping with us online on the live stream or the recorded service. We are glad that you've been with us this morning and we look forward to welcoming you to worship again, either online or in person. At this point, we are gonna bring the online part of our service to a close. And so we wanna say goodbye to you and bless you to freely and extravagantly express your love for Jesus the Savior as he has extravagantly loved you. Be at peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks be to God.